Former US Secretary of State Alexander Haig once described Israel as the largest unsinkable US aircraft carrier. Were there not an Israel, the United States of America would have to invent an Israel to protect her interest in the region. The United States would have to go out and invent an Israel. Israel is the most important US ally in the Middle East. The special relationship between the two countries has now endured for over half a century. But the bilateral bond only really began to flourish following the 1967 war. In that six-day war, Israel easily defeated a coalition of Arab states. From then on, at the latest, the US saw Israel as a potential base for US power in the Middle East. In the 1980s and 1990s, the two countries began cooperating in research, development and production of weapons. This cooperation has intensified over the years. Today, the US and Israeli military industrial surveillance complexes are interdependent and very closely intertwined. Israel's military is one of the most powerful in the world. And not only that. Israel is the world's 10th largest military exporter. For decades, U.S. governments have funded Israel's military and political regime and provided financial, intelligence and diplomatic support for Israel's atrocities. Israel is the largest recipient of U.S. military aid. Each year, Washington transfers billions in military aid and loan guarantees. Much of that money, however, ends up back in the U.S. weapons industry. Then they are the billions of dollars in private funds that flow from the US to Israel. In many cases, this money ends up in the hands of Israeli settlement organizations that continue the expulsion and dispossession of Palestinians in the West Bank and East Jerusalem. The well-funded pro-Israel lobby in Washington has certainly played a major role in shaping US foreign policy in the Middle East in Israel's favor. But the answer to why the US supports Israel goes far beyond that. Over the past several decades, Israel has played a crucial role in defending US imperial interests in the Middle East. It has helped the US dominate the region, thus reducing, but not eliminating, the need for direct US military involvement. Israel has served as a quasi-US military outpost in the world's most important geopolitical region. It has helped the US control the global oil spigot in the Middle East, on which the American empire remains dependent. Let's not forget, over 56% of the world's oil reserves are in the region. Israel has supported the US against forces that challenge US dominance in the Middle East, such as currently Iran, Syria and Hezbollah in Lebanon. On the other hand, the US has been a critical sponsor of Israel's settler colonial project. Over the past decades, US administrations have been fully complicit in Israel's occupation and apartheid regime, as well as in the dispossession, displacement and ethnic cleansing of Palestinians. In the recent past, the Biden administration has supported Trump's decision to move the US Embassy to Jerusalem and recognize Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights. I kept my promise, recognized Israel's eternal capital and opened the American embassy in Jerusalem. Nobody thought that was possible, right? I also recognized Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights. President Biden has also sought to expand the policy of diplomatically sidelining Palestinians in the region. The US is currently fueling the assault on Gaza by arming Israel and blocking all diplomatic efforts to end the bloodshed in the UN Security Council. The show of US support for Israel is intended to deter Iran and Hezbollah from escalating the conflict by opening a second front on Israel's northern border. But US support could also be a driver for radicalization in the Middle East and fuel anti-US sentiment in the region. Around the world, Israel's occupation and apartheid regime are increasingly unpopular. The continuation of Israel's settler colonial agenda depends heavily on Washington for money, 
weapons and diplomacy. In recent months, Israel's far-right government has at times openly broken with US leadership. In particular, the nationalist religious Zionist right, led by Smodrich and Ben Gvir, has brazenly expressed its disregard for US interests. So we might be witnessing some unseen developments in the special relationship. But things have also begun to shift in the US. US public support for Israel has historically been high. But in recent years, that support has markedly waned, especially among Democrats and younger people. These changes in US civil society could have a major impact on US policy towards Israel and the Middle East in the near future. That's all for today. Let me know what you think about all of this in the comment below. As always, thanks for tuning in and supporting the channel. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.